Welcome to the fifth in our series about quadcopter building for beginners. Now, in the last video, we spent a little bit of time trying to figure out where all the components were going to go. And by the end of it, we would managed to put our motors on and we also managed to figure out where our flight controller and power distribution board were going to go as well. We'd also decided that we're going to put the ESCs out on the arms and that's as far as we managed to get. So in this one, we're going to actually put the power system together and there's a couple of power systems on a model like this so we're going to talk about this as part of the video too. So let me just show you what I've done in between the two videos that we've just been talking about. So at the end of the last one I just put the screws into the bottom of the arms which hold the motors on. With these motors that they come with an assortment of screws just make sure that the screws are tightening up nicely don't go mad with them uh, these ones from Emacs actually come with a little tool to actually do everything up you don't want to go crazy uh, but you also want to make sure that the motors are spinning freely when they're in so each of those motors are in the corners and remember we actually installed the motors in the same way as that diagram so that the clockwise motors are in the right corners and the anti-clockwise are in the other corners and you'll notice here that two of the motors have the silver caps and two of them have the black caps on as well so that's all set in terms of mounting the power distribution board and the flight controller if I bring this a little bit closer uh, you can see that uh, we're using these nylon standoffs we have a little nylon washer here underneath the power distribution board and then on top we have the flight controller because this is the front of the model and this is the back and as we know the flight controller needs to be this way round from our little test so the USB is at the back so if I just spin these nuts off the model there we go we'll remove the flight controller so I've opted to solder the right angled pins on here um, and uh, used a very fine tipped soldering iron to do that but that's ready to plug everything in and we can see here that the motor numbers are actually printed on the flight controller so this side it goes one two three four five six seven and eight so those numbers also correspond to that same diagram up here so we can plug the motors into the flight controller when we're ready and there's that little white arrow pointing towards the front of the craft. Now the power distribution board is set up and ready here so we have the battery connection here and I've got a battery lead that we're going to solder onto that bit so that's the positive that's the negative so we're going to solder those two wires onto there like that and then we're going to pop on the ESCs onto each of the arms. I'm going to use double-sided tape just to keep them in place and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder each of these wires in place. The way I tend to do it is I just cut them so there's a little bit of slack and then solder them into place. Now let's very quickly talk about the two power systems because one of the things you'll notice here is the connector that comes from the ESCs that we have only has two wires and you may have seen other connectors that have three. So here's another ESC that we've used in other models and that connector has three wires so why is that and why do we have that so let's take a moment to talk about that before we get the soldering out and we start putting things together so there are actually two power systems on something like this and the first one is the most basic one that we're going to put together first and that is where we're going to just as we've had a look at connect the lipo battery connector onto the power distribution board and that power distribution board then has other pads that we're going to connect each of the ESCs to and then the ESCs are going to connect to the motors at this point we're just going to roughly connect each of the ESC and motor wires because when we test it up we'll make sure that we've got everything connected the right way around before we finally button everything up and make the connections off properly. That is the first one. That's typically running at the full battery voltage. Again, we're using 3S for this setup and a 3S battery fully charged is about 12.4 volts. So the 12.4 volts will come in from the battery, go around the power distribution board and be pushed out into each of the ESCs and the ESCs will use that voltage along with the current they'll pull from the battery to run the motors. 
the other power system is a little bit interesting. So there's also the need for a 5 volt power system on the Model 2. And that 5 volt power system is there to both run the flight controller, things like the radio receiver runs on the 5 volt power system, uh, servos do as well, on-screen displays, GPS units, all kinds of stuff. We are going to have to provide 5 volts somehow to run the flight controller. Now the way this tends to work is if we go back to the desk and we're looking at that other ESC, you'll notice that this one, has, it says BEC, 5 volts, 3 amps written on it. And what that is, is as well as taking the battery voltage in, it's also creating a little 5 volt supply that comes back down this wire that we're going to plug into the flight controller and also provides the 5 volts that's going to power everything. So if you're using an ESC like this that has a battery illuminated circuit in already, then it gets really straightforward. Just by plugging this into the flight controller, all of that is going to be taken care of. Now there are two types of battery illuminated circuit. I'm not going to go into masses of detail here. There is another video where we actually go and talk about ESCs and battery illuminated circuits, but a BEC is just a little circuitry that takes the main flight battery voltage and drops it down to the 5 volts that we need for the flight controller. Very briefly, there are two versions. You tend to have one called linear, which is this is, and if it's a linear BEC, and that will be in the specs for the electronic speed controller you're using, you can plug all these in side by side into the pins, into the flight controller as you would normally, and you can have them all connected and it'll be fine. If it's something called a switched BEC, then you can plug one of the ESCs in with the red wire connected and on the all the other connectors you just snip that red wire so that only one of them was providing the 5 volts and that's just the way that those BECs work. They sometimes get a little bit unhappy if they are plugged in side by side. Now we unfortunately don't have the benefit of having that red wire in the middle of the connection because our ESCs, if we go back to our little cable, are just the signal and the ground wire. That's all we've got. So let's go back to the diagrams. We need to figure out how we're going to get 5 volts then to run our model. And the way we're going to have to do it here is on our power distribution board, you'll notice here it says 5 volts. So I am going to wire or solder a little cable in here with the same servo connectors on it onto that spot and then I'm going to plug that into one of the spare pinouts on the flight controller and that then is going to provide the 5 volts that will run pretty much everything. So let's just have a look at what that looks like in a diagram. So here we are, we have the we're going to end up with the ESCs coming into the middle with their black and white cables and I'm going to have a little cable coming up from the side with 5 volts and ground on it from the power distribution board and that's going to provide all of my power. The way it works is the pins on the flight controller are actually all connected together from the power point of view. So all these pins at the bottom are ground and they're all connected. All the ones in the middle are going to carry the 5 volts and the ones on the very top are the ones that actually have the individual signals for the ESCs. And you can see that on the side because right here you can see it says signal, positive and negative and that's the way you can figure out which pin is which. Now when we plug in the 5 volt line into the flight controller then all of those pins that are connected will have the 5 volts and ground on. And the really cool part is when we plug the ESC in, the ESC doesn't care about the 5 volts, that's just going to want to know about the signal on the ground, so that's all taken care of. But also, if we then plug in the radio receiver, and we will in the next video, we'll have a look at the radio, then the 5 volts and ground that comes into the flight controller is going to go down the cables that we use to connect the radio receiver and power that as well. So that's going to be taken care of too. So now we know that, then what I'm going to do is let me just start doing a little bit of soldering and we can get this thing starting to look like a real quadcopter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip the very ends 
off these two wires and I'm going to solder them onto these pads here. Now if you are not very happy about soldering you can get power distribution boards that already come with the cables attached uh, but for the purposes of this I'm just going to do this off camera it's really tricky I found to try and do soldering with the camera on. If you want to go and see soldering tutorial then we have a video here that goes through it. My advice would be the soldering station that we're using here is that weller that we looked at at the very first video. We're going to use a nice broad tip so we can get lots of heat in there. I also use a very good solder which has lead in it. Um, not very good for the environment but it flows and works an awful lot better. So let me do that and we'll come back and have a look. So to connect the power wire I've just stripped off a little bit of the insulation at the end, only three or four millimeters, and then used a bit of solder just to put some tinning on the end of the wires. Then I've done exactly the same with the pads for the battery connector on the power distribution board and then put one on top of the other, applied a little bit of heat from the soldering iron and melted the solder pad into the solder that was already on the wires themselves. Next thing we're going to do is put on the 5 volt connection and this is the one again that's going to power our flight controller and this battery illuminated circuit is great because it already has this feature on it. So if you're going to use ESCs that don't provide that 5 volts then you do have to look at using something like this power distribution board we have here to make sure that you can get it. And again, exactly the same way, I tinned the pads, tinned the lead and popped it on. So now we have our connection for the power up to the flight controller too. The last connection we need to do is these two pads here. These are just the battery voltage available. I always add an extra JST connector onto any power distribution board that I'm using because I invariably find that later on I need it for something else. Could be powering my FPV equipment, might be plugging some LED navigation lights into. It's handy to put it in now and then once you've got that connected you've got everything done. So here we are, we have our three things connected onto the power distribution board. We have the main power coming in from the battery and we have a 5 volts ready to plug into the flight controller and we also have the battery voltage available in a little JST connector that we can use for something later on in the series. Now the last thing we're going to do is to actually tin the, each of the pads and again tinning is just putting a little bit of solder in each of those pads ready for connecting the ESC wires. Now before you pop the power distribution board back onto the model it can be very handy to give it a quick test. We have the connector for the 5 volts and we also have the connector for the battery. So if you have a voltmeter what you can do is just pop it on that 5 volt output plug in your battery, make sure that no smoke appears out of anything and that also there is 5 volts across that 5 volt out. That way you know that when you plug it into your flight controller later on nothing bad's going to happen. Also handy if you're going to test it like that just to make sure that there is the battery voltage on each of those positive and negative pads that you're about to use for the ESC. Now we have tinned each of the pads for those ESCs and we've popped the board back into the model. We did all of the other soldering outside of the model because it's easier but now we need to know how short to cut each of the wires. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting each of the wires from the ESCs that we've stuck down into the arms slightly longer than I need because you always leave yourself a little bit more than you need in case you make a problem with the connection. Strip back three or four millimeters again, again tinned the wires and then put them onto the pre-tinned pads, a little bit of heat from the soldering iron and then they're connected. What I've done is work my way around and done all of the ESCs so now they're all together. Now we're starting to look like a quadcopter. So after all that soldering we are nearly there. So here we have our main power system all set up. So we have our battery connector coming into the back of the power distribution board and then each of the ESCs are stuck onto the arms with double sided foam and they are then connected into the power distribution board on the pads that they have already. In addition, just as we've shown, I've installed an extra little JST connector at the front. That's very handy for doing things like running LEDs. You'll tend to find that you want to add things later to um, the model and having a power connector that you can just jump onto rather than have to take things apart to get at the battery voltage is great. And we also have our little cable that we're going to use to power the flight controller and the radio receiver. And again, that's plugged into or soldered to the 5 volt out of the power distribution board. The only other things we've done here is we have uh, written 
on the connectors for each of these motors. If I just put this down again, if we put that little graphic up in the top left hand corner of how the motors are laid out, on the connectors that associated with each of the ESCs, so number four is that motor, we have this one has number two written on it, hopefully you can pick that up on the camera, this one has number three and that one is number one and that makes it really easy to solder everything up. So now we've got all that done we can pop our flight controller on and remember that uh, this bottom pin is negative and this is motor one so if I just pop him on, there we go, we'll put the little securing nuts that hold him on in a minute, then the wiring up should start to get very straightforward. So we're going to plug in the power connector into any spare set of motor pins. Now there are eight on here, I'm not going to use all eight of them, so I'm just going to pop that into the end and that's going to provide the 5 volt power to the flight controller when we get that far and then we have motor four so again we're gonna the black wire needs to be at the bottom so I'm going to plug that into output four this is output two so again black wire at the bottom we're gonna pop that in there and we can tidy up these wires later on with a cable tie or two this is output three so that's gonna go there which hopefully should mean this is one, there we go, one, and again black bit to the bottom and that is most of the wiring done. Now what that means, if I bring this up to the camera just a little bit, is that the four motors are connected, we have power coming from the board underneath. The last thing I'm going to do before the next video is I am going to temporarily solder the three wires coming out of the speed controller to the three wires on the motor. Doesn't matter which, only two things matter. One, that uh, they're not touching, so I might put a little bit of insulation tape over the top because when we come back we're going to connect up the radio and then we're almost at the point where we can do our final configuration and setup and we'll be very close to going out to fly. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.